And with that, let's now shift focus over to two lunar mission which are grabbing headlines and that is of India and Russia. They have both started their race to the moon's lunar south pole with Chandrayaan 3 of India and Luna 25 of Russia. The question that stands in front of us is who will win this new space race? First of all, is it even a space race, uh, race or is it a common human quest to explore the uncharted terrain on the moon and more specifically what exactly is the driving force to the moon. On 11th of August, Russia launched its first moon landing spacecraft in 47 years and joined India to race for the moon. Around a month ago, India had launched its dream project Chandrayaan-3 to aim for the moon which is expected to make a soft landing on the lunar surface on 23rd August. It's important to note that both these spacecraft are going to make an attempt to land on South Pole of the Moon. No lander has ever successfully gone there before. Was the timing planned? Mostly not. But now the entire world has its eyes on these two spacecraft. If successful, we will not have just one but two vehicles on Moon competing to find water and useful minerals. Now, while we wait for the end results, Russian officials have said that they surely want to be the first aircraft to make a successful landing on the south surface. However, it will be interesting to see if slow and steady for now, Chandrayaan-3 wins this race or not. But before that, let's also discuss what's driving the new race to the moon. Here's a report. Russia launched its first moon landing spacecraft in 47 years. In doing so, it's joined the race to become the first nation to make a soft landing on the lunar south pole. That's a region believed by scientists at NASA and other space agencies to hold coveted pockets of water ice in its shadowed craters. Rough terrain makes landing there difficult, but the prize of discovering water ice could be historic. The Russian mission is competing against India, which launched its own lunar lander last month. It's also up against China and the United States, which also have advanced exploration programs. A Soyuz 2.1 rocket carrying the Luna 25 craft blasted off from the Vostochny Cosmodrome before being boosted out of Earth's orbit toward the moon over an hour later. It's expected to touch down on the moon later this month. There's much riding on this mission. The Kremlin says the West sanctions over the Ukraine war, many of which have targeted Moscow's aerospace sector, have failed to cripple the Russian economy. But the moonshot will test the nation's growing independence in space. Its invasion of Ukraine has severed nearly all of Moscow's space ties with the West, beside its integral role on the International Space Station. The European Space Agency had planned to test its Pilot D navigation camera by attaching it to Luna 25, but also cut ties with the project after Russia invaded Ukraine. For centuries, astronomers have wondered about water on the Moon, which is a hundred times drier than the Sahara. Although major powers have all been probing it in recent years, no country has yet made a soft landing on the South Pole. What's driving the new race to the moon? Major powers like the US, China, Japan and the EU have all been probing the moon over recent years. A Japanese lunar landing failed last year and an Israeli mission failed in 2019. There's been a focus on the South Pole, where no country has been able to reach yet. Rough terrain makes landing difficult, but the prize could be historic. Ice that could be used to extract fuel, oxygen, and drinking water. Russia and India are racing to get there first. Yeah, Russia's aspirations towards the moon are mixed up in a lot of different things. I think Asaf Siddiqui is a professor of history at Fordham University. There's always been speculation that there's water on the moon, and that's important. If you if you want to build permanent settlements on the moon, so I think what Russia is trying to do is really spearhead that investigation and like be at the forefront of it. So this the fact that they're exploring the South Pole isn't an accident. Astronomers have wondered about water on the moon for centuries, which is a hundred times drier than the Sahara Desert. It was only in 2020 that NASA confirmed the existence of water there. 
India sent up its Chandrayaan-3 lunar lander last month after the Chandrayaan-2 failed in 2019. But Russia may also have political ambitions behind its space missions, especially as it faces sanctions from the West over the war in Ukraine. First and foremost, it's an expression of national uh, power on the global stage. Russia wants to go to the moon partly to assert its national place on the with the big big guy, so to speak. China has already announced plans to return humans to the moon. The U.S. has a major prog program called Artemis that it is uh, in, in the middle of. So there's a lot of act activity going on. Uh, Russia, because it lacks the economic power of the United States, has allied with China. So it's possible that what the Chinese do, the Russians may actually piggyback on top of that. Um, in the next 10, 15 years. All right, so let's try and get in some more inputs and some insights into what these two lunar missions will not just mean for India and Russia, but for the entire quest for the moon. And for that, let me introduce my guest today. I'm joined in by Dr. Suresh Nayak, who's the former group director of ISRO. Many thanks to you, Dr. Nayak, for joining in. Uh, many are calling this a race to the moon and a race between India and Russia. Would you call it a race or is it a common human quest to explore the undiscovered terrain? Yeah, I would uh, look at it uh, this way that uh, it is uh, from Israel's point of view, I don't think uh, they had uh, the question of racing uh, against the other countries because uh, they declared that this mission, in fact, they had the first attempt four years back. And this is the second attempt they are doing now. And uh, I think till uh, uh, the Russian uh, Luna 25 was uh, launched, uh, I, I doubt whether it was known to the world before that. True. So from the India's point of view, I think uh, it is a surprise uh, but India has already welcomed it and uh, sent, uh, ISRO chairman has sent uh, good wishes to the uh, Roscosmos, that is the Russian Space Agency. Yeah, but one yes, thing is certain that uh, now uh, the uh, space faring countries of the world, like uh, of course India, Russia, America, China, they are all concentrating on the southern side of the moon. Absolutely, Doctor. And when we talk about the arrival of both the lunar missions, what is that key factor that is governing the differing arrival times of these two lunar missions? Remember, Chandrayaan was launched much earlier than Luna 25, but it is uh, expected to make uh, it to the moon's surface before Chandrayaan. Having said that, what is ensuring uh, this timely arrival of, uh, of Luna 25? And what is that factor that is governing their arrival times? Uh, actually, I will put it this way, that uh, Russia uh, is arriving at the moon much faster that is, I think, uh, in about six days, whereas uh, India took uh, more than a month, okay, and uh, uh, to arrive at the moon. So this actually is because uh, there are two reasons. One is uh, India's rocket is not as powerful as Soyuz, that is the Russian rocket. And uh, India wants to take a safe uh, way to moon. Uh, safer way to moon is to keep it in the Earth's orbit, increase its orbit by sling action due to gravity assist of the Earth, and raise it to a beyond actually uh, the balance point between Earth and moon's gravity, and then give it a boost so that it starts its journey towards moon because it, in order to start the journey, the velocity has to be about more than 11.2 kilometers per second. So uh, India has designed it, uh, the whole trajectory in such, way, such a way. And its advantage 
is uh, it is a it becomes a low cost mission and uh, india always prefers its mission to be low cost and safer now on the other hand russia has planned a direct flight direct shot to the moon not around the earth first circuitous route but straight line to the moon and now in this particular uh, approach uh, it is Uh, rather risky because uh, it can miss the moon and secondly it is costlier okay and thirdly uh, why russia had such a time advantage over uh, india's uh, chandrayaan 3 is russia's uh, satellite is half the weight of chandrayaan 3 so the acceleration which luna 25 gets due to its rocket is much higher because the mass it is carrying is half so all these three factors together make uh, russian luna 25 to reach uh, in a shorter time because it uh, took off from the earth on 11th of august as against 14th of uh, sorry uh, yeah 11th of august as against 14th of july of chandrayaan 3 okay almost a month later and uh, it has reached the lunar orbit successfully on 16th that is yesterday and that is confirmed by roscosmos so now we know that russia has really managed to successfully enter the lunar orbit in spite right. of the straight flight they took and another important thing here is russia has got experience of sending a straight a shot to the moon earlier all right many thanks to you dr nag for sharing those precious insights with us i'm sure you'll be keeping a very close watch on both the missions and we'll keep connecting with you